we are going to take an awesome ride on this here paddle boat down the Mississippi River. This is going to be quite cool. And we're actually going to go to the battlefield where Andrew Jackson defeated the British in the final battle of the War of 1812, which actually took place that battle in 1815, but that was the final battle of the war. Decisive victory of, for Americans. And if you've ever heard the, the old song, long, long, long before I ever thought about being around, I'm sure most of you, it goes, in 1814 we took a little trip along with Colonel Jackson down the mighty Mississippi. We took a little bacon and we took a little beans. We fought the bloody British near the town of New Orleans. And it goes on to talk about, they came up near the Gulf of Mexico, and, we fired our guns and the British kept coming. There wasn't quite as many as there was a while ago. Yeah, you can look that song up. I would play it, but I think I'll get copyrighted by YouTube if I did. Which is uh, crappy, but anyway, yeah. Great sight coming up on a very cool boat. Me, it's only the second time I've seen the Mississippi. I haven't uh, been a lot of places in the Mississippi. The only other time was not too many months ago in St. Louis, Missouri. Farther up the river. But here we're just north of the Gulf of Mexico where the Mississippi empties out. And uh, Mississippi is the largest river in America. You might want to wait a few more seconds. It's okay if you missed a shot, however. There's about a million of them online. It's got the green buildings that you see to the left of the boat right now are called the Governor Nichols Tree Wharf. It does look a little dilapidated, I know. It was damaged during Hurricane Ida one year ago. However, it is warped but down the Mississippi. So she was just explaining coast. The British, when they left, of course, they were running. They got their rear ends handed to them, and they ran out of here quick. And uh, they melted down the British cannons, and they made four statues of Andrew Jackson, who was the hero. One of them in Washington, D.C., which I was saying earlier, did look like the same. It was made so they put one in Washington, D.C. in front of the White House, one here in front of St. Louis Cathedral, one in Jacksonville, Florida, and one in Tennessee, I believe she said. So, there's four of them all melted out of British cannons from this war when they ran off and left their stuff. He sailed on to Texas instead, where he set up a colony, which failed. His men got mad, they mutinied, shot LaSalle in the back, and walked back to Canada. It was not a good day. The next two guys to sail up the river are two brothers named Ianville and Iberville. They are very interested in setting up a colony, but before they do... Open pan! Handle cartridge! So, to be in the militia 200 years ago, you gotta be two things. You've gotta be male and you've gotta be a free citizen. But Jackson doesn't have that luxury when he gets here because the British are about to invade with an army of 8,000. 
So basically the only thing you have to be at the Battle of New Orleans, the only thing you have to have is one top and one bottom tooth. And that's for this next step. Prime! So this is actually before bullets are invented. What they're shooting is a paper tube full of gunpowder and a musket ball. You gotta be able to tear it open. Shut pan and cast about. Charge with cartridge. So these are what are called muzzle loaders. That means everything gets loaded in through the front of the gun and you push it down to where you shoot and that's what they're doing in this next step. Draw rammer. Ram down cartridge. Now don't worry about that car in the distance. We're just shooting black powder. We're not actually shooting any musket balls today. So we're not gonna put a hole in anybody's tire. Return rammer. Poise firelock. Now the most important thing to keep in mind is while we're going through this drill, the British are not waiting. They are running across this field as quickly as possible because they've got nothing to hide behind. So they want to get up into the American line before we have a chance to shoot. Cock, firelock. Take aim. Fire. Prime and load. So we have just successfully shot at two of the 8,000 British soldiers bearing down on us. Maybe we hit one. We might have hit one. This is about the point where I run away. This is the point where a lot of the American militia runs away because, hey, militia, they're just shopkeepers. They're farmers. They're lawyers. They're not soldiers. They are not prepared for this. And when you shoot at a wall of red-coated soldiers and they don't stop, that's the scariest thing in the world. That's the reason the battle happens right where we're standing, because Jackson knows that his troops don't want to be fighting the British in the open field. So he makes us a spot to trap them. 200 years ago, those trees behind me, if you picture a Louisiana bayou, you've got a pretty accurate idea. That was a cypress swamp. So deep water, big trees. The British can't march through there. The British can't march down the river you guys came down. They're stuck on this small little strip of dry land between the swamp and the river. We're at the narrowest point. And Jackson makes it an even better spot for his troops by having his soldiers and enslaved people from the local plantations dig out that ditch in front of us. They turn it into a moat. It is 20 feet wide, six feet deep, full of water. All that mud gets piled right where the sidewalk is today. And suddenly, I'm a farmer, yeah, but I've got a moat and a wall in front of me. I'm a lot less frightened of the British soldiers, even if they don't drop when I shoot at them. You guys ready? Poise, firelock. Cock, firelock. Take aim. Fire. Prime and load. So they're going to load one more shot. And while they're doing that, let me tell you about the battle that happened here on January 8th. So by January 8th, the British have been in Louisiana for two weeks and they have run head first into the American line a couple of times. Only five. Oh no. It is a um, So the, Louis, the British troops have run into the American Wall a bunch of times. So January 8th, they decide to throw everything they've got right at where we're standing. So they march a thousand troops along this, the uh, river there. That runs into the muskets of the Louisiana militia and the cannons manned by pirates because of course we have pirates at this battle. They send about 2,000 troops along the swamp that runs into the muskets of the Kentucky militia and the cannons of the U.S. Artillery Corps. Both columns get stopped dead in their tracks. The fire is so intense that after 45 minutes, there's an impenetrable wall of gun smoke. Nobody can see what's going on. Jackson actually has to order his troops, hey, hold fire for a second. We've got to figure out what's going on here. When the smoke lifts, over 2,000 British soldiers are killed, captured, or wounded. Here on the American line, we lose 14. So it's not a fair fight, but if you're fighting for your home, you don't want to play fair. You guys have about 20 minutes left here on the battlefield. If you want to check out the visitor center, we got some great movies in there. If you want to talk to Amanda and see what it's like to handle one of these muskets, she'll be hanging out here for a few minutes. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day here at the battlefield. Chalamet, Battlefield and National Cemetery Visitor Center. And here's where the battle took place. Behind that house, up those stairs, this is where we get off at the Mississippi River. A lot of boggy, swampy marshland around here, and it wouldn't be fun to fight in.
sweeping overview of the battlefield. Not super huge. Trees around here are really cool looking too. Some old trees. Goodbye to Shalmay Battlefield. And now back onto the Creole Queen. Back down the Mississippi River to New Orleans, which is just about five miles down the road. Or down the river, I should say. Passed by a number of interesting sites along the way as well, including a high school that is no longer, but the remains of it they left standing, just kind of a testament to the power of nature that was wiped out by Hurricane Katrina, the big hurricane that flooded New Orleans in 2014, 2004, excuse me. And there's the Creole Queen. completely driven from that paddle on the back. <laughs> 